welcome to this week's edition of TSB Talks, where we bring you the hot latest stories and hot takes on what's been going on in social media and in the world of entertainment. Yeah. So basically, this guy was a trader and he made, I'm guessing, you don't, you don't become, this just doesn't happen without, you know, steps leading to it. So I think he was, whatever he was doing, whatever deals he was making, yeah. it, at one point it was working and his company may have been aware of it. Yeah. And, you know, they said, well, as long as it's succeeding, then, you know, we understand. But if anything should go down, you're the fall guy and we, yeah. we don't know That's what it is. I so I feel like maybe he's now the fall guy. And well, what's so happening, many you know? layers to the story, though. Is he trading illegally? Is it, um, you know, obviously I know there's a lot of accountability when it comes to large amounts of money. Yeah. Do they need to make an example of someone for someone? Yeah. Of course. Like, why do they need to where? Why are they back? deporting him? Why is that why is like like deported? For them to send them back to where they come from. Do like, you think he should be deported? Then? Well, no, but no, why man. is he is he here illegally? And yeah. actually, no, he's no, been no, here no. since he you know was four years old. Yeah. No, even and if he, he was no here other... illegally since no, he was four and he didn't Yeah, but he's old enough to have a... He's contributed to our taxes. He's contributed to our economy. He's contributed to that company. And I'm guessing that... That company, UBS, is a bank, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing that they have massive influence in um, uh, relations, relations, international yeah, relations, they must, and yeah, government of relations. Yeah, billions. He yeah. Wants. Someone so is playing a game. I feel with like his life. he's the fall guy for something much bigger than himself. Yeah. Yeah. One man and stole billions. That doesn't make no it, sense. With all the red, man. with all the financial red tape and flags and all the crackdowns, there's more. I feel like there's more to the story. Hundred percent. And this is just the PR version that we're getting, yeah. which is all well and good. Right. Let's get into Tiny Tempers. Take I've been doing a bit of reading on this guy called Kwaku Adeboli. So I don't know if you've heard of him, but he was a former banker. He committed a lot of fraud and, and he's done some jail time, but now he's facing deportation. They want to take him out of England and send him back to Ghana. He's just served four years. So if you're a foreign national and you do a crime where you have to serve over four years, you're eligible for deportation. However, for me, I think it's wrong. This guy came to England at the age of 12. He studied here, primary school, secondary school, college, university, ended up getting a really, really good job. It clearly seems like like he's someone that's very apologetic and he has done jail time is it fair to deport someone like that you know and send them back to you know a place that they really didn't grow up in a place that they really didn't build their life in i don't think so man so if you know about this story if you didn't know go do your that is so true. i get it i feel like he's spent his whole adult life here yeah um this is where he grew up this is where he got this his education what, this is home. and i don't think that he should be deported. Now, should you feel the same way if he wasn't Ghanaian or if he was another race? They wouldn't do that if he was another race. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. I don't, if he yeah. was a white man, say if he was, was Irish or, or Australian something. Yeah, he's or something, gonna, they would never do that. Him. They'd, they'd put I, him back to Australia, no. Like they would never. Of, yeah, like send him back to Australia. No, no. it's not going to happen. <laughs> well, you know what I'm <laughs> if he's just a trader, at least some of his higher-ups knew. They definitely. But, like, I a mean, we all watched these shows, like, Things, money doesn't move like that no. without your superiors no. being aware Billions. of it no. or without it, without it being sanctioned in some no, way. You no can't way. move that kind of money without Especially in the UK. authority. Yeah, what? he should be deported. The UK strict he about them. Deported. Yeah, I feel like the whole gang should be deported. They, Whoever, but honestly, everybody that signed off on every document that he okayed or needed signing off on, the whole crew should be indicted. Yeah, if they were going to deport him, they should have just deported him before they even put him in jail. He yeah, served no yeah, jail yeah, time. They shouldn't have done a jail time. They should have sent him yeah. back. You know now I mean? he's going to get punished twice. For what reason? Like, no, so let's get like... into some of the comments in regards <clears throat> to Tiny Temper's defence. Okay, this is crazy to me. Mr. Adeboli was a trader, so he was an intelligent individual and by no means was living a hard life but through greed. And he got caught out for 1.8 billion. Now they want to dip. Now they want to deport him. Tiny is talking. What is going on here? That's an L that Mr. Adeboli is going to have to hold. Mm -hmm. Why Tiny? Why does doesn't Tiny make public videos on real injustices that guys and girls are suffering in poor areas and can't do better for themselves? Whew. What? Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, I think it's that accurate. It is true, and I think that, obviously, what happens, you know, we're in the media, we're in the spotlight, 
this story obviously has gone right to the top and obviously people are talking about it. Yeah. What then happens is you have a knock-on effect then celebrities come and talk about, about this. It, yeah. Certain type of injustice rather than other types of injustice. Yeah, and yeah. he's got a point. Yes, yeah, he's got a point. He's definitely it's got a point. It's, and it's not to say that Tiny doesn't do things to, Absolutely. you know, resolve other injustices mm -hmm. yeah. that go on behind the scenes. But this just happens to be one that he that has gone, you know, viral to yeah, say Yeah, but you never know. He probably yeah. knows someone that's probably been through Yeah, yeah. and yeah, maybe yeah. they have exactly. ties. Exactly. And yeah. that yeah. triggered him and he was and like, he was nah, I need and to so say something. a personal thing. Exactly. And even Tiny. more importantly, Tiny only really said he don't he doesn't think it should happen. What do yeah. you think? He's asking for your opinions as yeah, well. Yeah, so it was like an IG story. He didn't go and hold a press conference. Yeah, exactly. So I wanted him to go and talk about everyone in the world. All these people in the yeah, world. Yeah. He's one man. He can't, can't go around talking about battles. everyone. He like, just basically said, "I've been reading up on this story, and I don't and think that he me. should be deported." What do you guys think? Simple. Exactly. Um, so I get it. Um, from Regal, and Regal and Andrea. I don't care. I'm more concerned about the Windrush Generation deportations that have taken place. Many of those individuals worked hard for most of their lives in Britain and they were still deported to the Caribbean and forced to leave their families and this is mm -hmm. very valid because mm. over the past six months to a yeah. year there's been all these deportations yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, from so of people many, from Cap of like Caribbean time like, where like the idea of the subject of race and the things that are happening in regards to race yeah, yeah. are super like it's a super foc focal yeah, point really right now is. and I get it. I get that, you know, there's older generations who have been deported every day mm. and they of shouldn't course. be. And no, there's no one, and, and I guess there's no one with, people are feeling like, okay, there's no one with that much influence that's like shining the light on it. Mm. So let's talk about that. Let's talk exactly. about someone who has, who's worked hard all their lives, yeah. a good paying job, hasn't yeah. deported the system or hasn't, you know, tried to get, get rich quick. And I it's get true. it. I get it. Like, if you look at the comment and you think about it, the, the wind rush generation deportation is so big and so vast. Yes, it, it like is. Nobody like, wants to yeah. tackle it. And who's gonna who's gonna speak on their nobody behalf? Who's gonna, like, who's gonna make a video a post and no. say and bring more light to the issue? Because when it first started happening, yeah, it was headline news. Yeah, but slowly yeah. and slowly, it's now the sm on the smaller mm -hmm. prints yeah. of the newspaper to yeah. the point where it's just going to carry on yeah. and no one's going to talk and about it. But the UK, they really take up. fraud to another level. Like They do not like fraud at all. If you do any type of fraud, they'll send you to jail straight away. But, like, this, is the, but this is the thing. Why is fraud... I get, fraud is wrong because wrong. you're actually defrauding but, people of their hard-earned money. Yeah. At the same time, there's other heinous crimes that get a really small slap small. on the wrist or there are other injustices that go unchecked yeah. and but, unpunished. And but what you're doing, about when you defraud someone or you defraud a big organisation that has so many ties, you're actually saying to them, you know, I've got one over on you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's and actually, they don't like that. It's actually that. a no. blow. And it's, you, you do something behind someone's back. Killing someone, I'm probably going to find the body, be able to investigate the um, crime scene and find the murder weapon and put you in jail for it. Mm. Fraud, I'll find you eventually, but you've hurt me and it's not going to be and always you, as easy to get all those no, finances not, and funds back. Yeah. But what about I, lives and families that are being destroyed by the Windrush deportation? That, no. Like, that's, uh, that yeah. family's yeah. been torn yeah, yeah. apart. Like, from their children. Yeah, yeah from their from children, their, parents, their grandchildren, like, from the lives that they've built that they spent what 40 years building yeah, like building yeah. the communities that they've built mm -hmm. the things that they've seen the roads that they've watched changed and they yeah. don't know where yeah. their kids go well, once yeah. they're separated that's it they the don't things, know where they've gone they don't know how if they don't even know if they're alive like they're once actually, they're separated that's it the wind rush generation is actually leaving a place that they built up yeah they came here they built it they up built and it now and now you're off. telling them they, they don't they belong yeah it's, it's wrong nice. and yeah. it's so bad it's, it's, it's wrong uh, let's get into Dion's comment. We've got people deport, um, getting deported for committing no crime at all. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should care about them first. This is true. From Lynn Metox. Mm -hmm. God, you guys' names are really funky, aren't they? <laughs> um, he better take that brain out of his. He used to do fraud life and assist in making Ghana great. No one in the financial world here will touch him. His best bet is Ghana. She does have a point. Um, if he does get, you know, if his deportation goes through, I believe that, you know, those smarts and that he's acquired can be used to better the economy. Yeah. Because he's a Robin Hood, modern day Robin Hood now, yeah? Do you know what? 
have done. It is what it yep. is. But I'm from Osei Rebecca. I too initially thought that he deserved to be deported as a result of his crime. But having looked into his case more, it is not fair that he be deported. One, he has served a sentence. Two, his bosses knew what he was doing mm -hmm. and only pulled him up when the losses became substantial. And three, he has only ever known Britain as his home. He's definitely been used as a scapegoat. When he was making profit for UBS, they were hush. But because there's a loss, he's a criminal. It's hypocrisy at, the, at its finest. No. It's not. He, he can't have been the only one for no, that amount of money nah. to be like being profited nah. and lost from. You don't lose money I feel like, like quick. there's more than one person involved, definitely. and it definitely will go to the highest levels of whoever heads UBS. Like you can't, you can't make those kind of financial moves without anyone being aware Around, of it or yeah. green lighting it or giving you the okay. Because especially at certain stages, there will be flags raised. Like okay, this trade looks off. Okay, mm -hmm. why did why did these numbers not add up? What like when they're doing the books, you know, there's there's so the so company, many levels of checks. Everybody's yeah. benefiting from this thing, of even course. the government, yeah. even the people that write the rules and regulations. Then nobody's saying anything. No one's saying no. anything no. until it they're got too cover big up. to cover and up. We need and they were someone. like, we need okay. a full guy. So they were like, Mr. Let this guy take all the blame. Yeah, because yeah. you imagine them coming yeah. in his office, police. I'm Isn't sorry, it? Mr. Adiboli, you're being arrested on suspicion Imagine of fraud. Imagine how he felt. Packing up yeah. his whole computer. He's and the thing is, and he was him. probably in cahoots with everyone in the office. When exactly. They were because yeah, they were just watching like, yeah, I ain't going to jail. You nah. better go to jail yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah. It's not it's fair. Awful, man. It's really and um, from Ash Hassani, look, I'm not gone in and have lived in Ghana for four years. It's pretty amazing here and opportunities are incredibly vast. I love it so much here and I don't have any intentions of leaving. Ghana is actually paradise. He'll be laughing in less than a year. Well, Ash, yeah, it's Ash sunny. Not, yeah, loves that, I guess, yeah, I guess it's not, um, I don't think the point is that Ghana's not nice. Yeah, yeah like everybody knows so Ghana is the place. Like, you know, Africa's beautiful. Mm -hmm. The world is a beautiful place. The point is that this is the only home that he this has known. Exactly. And he probably, he likely does not deserve to be deported no. after he has you know served his sentence he's doing community service yeah. he's remorseful he grew up here he he's had a school in here like if if you know he had a home base or it was by coastal then i can understand why yeah. they're like exactly. oh you know yeah. maybe you have ties to it so i feel like they're really trying to make you know an example out of him yes, to the point are. and they're like a jail sentence is not enough like no. we're actually just going to get rid of you bam finished they that's don't play it. with fraud in the uk i'm telling you like once you do fraud that's it but I feel like him being African plays a really big part because if it was anybody else, they would not get deported. I'm telling you, absolutely, like, it wouldn't happen. <laughs> absolutely, it wouldn't even be a question. Yeah. Um, well, absolutely. that's all, folks, for this week. Oh my god, I sound like Box Bunny cartoon. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for this week. Um, thank you for watching and hit the subscribe button, follow, like on Instagram, IG, IGTV, YouTube. Just follow us on all social media platforms and we will see you next time. Toodles.